Featuring a 30K DPI optical sensor, 11 programmable buttons, third generation optical switches, hyperspeed wireless, infinity scroll wheel, tactile cycling modes, and 13 zone RGB, it's clear why this mouse garners such a reputation and is currently sitting at 3,910 five star reviews on Amazon. Although weighing at 111 grams, do the robust features make this mouse any better than the competition? Even though this this mouse has a sleek ergonomic design. Does it really warrant a demanding 160 US dollar price tag? Has Razer really revolutionized our gaming experience with the latest innovations or should we spend our money somewhere else? Welcome to the Rage Academy. On this channel, we discuss if this gamer tech is a good fit for you. Perhaps you prefer something a little cheaper. Maybe you like the design but prefer a different manufacturer or possibly you'd like the brand not too many have heard of. Today, we're looking at a refresh on a 2017 design. This is the Razer Basilisk V3 Pro. The ergonomics of this mouse, it fits very comfortably in my hand. It's got a really nice shape to it. I do like the back profile. It really fits into the palm very nicely. It has an uh, elongated M1 and M2. It has a decent amount of distance to cover to actuate on M1 and M2 there. On the thumb grip, it has this nice rubberized texture that I'm really, I like it. I'm a fan of that. I like the rubberized texture. It feels much better than anything I've I could purchase aftermarket. So good on your razor. I also threw super glides on this mouse and it glides around like butter. The button layout on this makes a lot of sense. I, I like it a lot. The mouse itself has this nice textured feeling to it, similar to like a, a keycap like a nice textured keycap. The, the type of plastic that they use feels very nice. The sensor on this mouse is the Razer Focus Pro 30K sensor. It has a few features that everybody else really has. So you can set your mouse sensitivity to 30K DPI if you're into that. I don't know who is. I'm not. I hang out around 800. I've seen people do 1600. I don't know who's using 30K, but I guess it's cool that you can do that. You can adjust the liftoff distance. It has some other features too, like motion sync and the auto tracking feature. The smart tracking just essentially allows you to maintain the same lift distance on your mouse, regardless if you're on an uneven surface or not. One of the neat things or not so neat things, depending on your point of view, is the switches on this mouse. They are optical, so that means you get lightning fast performance, but you lose the ability to mod this mouse. And speaking of the switches, this is what they sound like. Of course, this mouse uses Razer's Hyper Speed Wireless, which I've never had an issue with. I really haven't had an issue with any wireless mouse's wireless unit. And my computer sits like all the way over there. It sits a good solid five feet from me and I, I've never really noticed an issue. So, I mean, that's just part of the, the industry right now. It's gotten so good that you really don't have to worry about that anymore. You just plug in your dongle and you're good to go. One of the drawbacks to the Razer Basilisk is that you have to install Razer Synapse in order to use its features. You'll be able to change the mouse bindings, change scroll wheel options, and activate hyperspeed. Hyperspeed allows you to use one dongle for more than one Razer product. There's your standard sensitivity options. I thought it was nice that you can adjust X and Y, and there's your polling rate adjustments too. Of course, you can control all the RGB on the mouse and you can adjust the lift distance as well, which is a pretty nice touch. I don't really enjoy installing mouse software on my PC. Some people were upset in my super light video, so I thought I'd explain. This is the Wooting 60HE. It's an upcoming keyboard I'm going to be reviewing, so subscribe if you want to see that video. But the way they handle the software is very interesting. There is no software. You just go to Wooting.io, make your adjustments, and write it straight to the device. Mouse manufacturers should pay attention. This is a much better solution than installing software 
in my opinion. But seeing as how I'm put in a position where I'm forced to use the software, I will say that the amount of features that are available were a pleasant surprise. And word of caution, disable auto updates. They're enabled by default and they'll screw you over. Whenever I order any tech, I try my best not to read other reviews so I can give you my unbiased opinion. And there's a standout feature on this mouse that no other manufacturer holds a candle to right now. I honestly don't even know where to begin. Razer has got it figured out. Out of box, it is the most notable feature of the mouse and is clearly the star of the show. What you're seeing is probably one of the coolest things in modern mice design. The entire mouse wheel has its own housing. Inside the mouse wheel, you'll find some teeth with a stopper bar. Even cooler, when you engage the infinity spin, the stopper bar will move out of the way, allowing the mouse wheel to spin unencumbered. This is how Razer achieves a tactile feel and what I would describe as a ratcheting sound, while also having one of the smoothest infinity scrolls out of any mouse I've ever used. This small but important part makes the mouse an absolute delight to use. The 111 gram weight is the only real downside I can see. If you can get past the weight, I think it's worth a purchase. Heck, I think it's worth it just to try the mouse wheel and return it. Thanks for watching. Let me know what your favorite mouse is in the comments. This has been the Rage Academy, and until next time, GG.